to the head holes. <laughs> Chauncey, yeah, classic. The massacre. Yeah. One time, and the dumb crime. The life of rhyme. Go the skull. See below. He's a perfect shot. I mean, accurate. Yeah. No out of eye contact. Phew. Putting suckers to sleep. Place most wanted, nigga. Classic. Niggas to sleep. Putting niggas to sleep. Putting, putting. What's up, family? Hey, fa hey, fair use for this video, man. It's about to be another good video from old flight, baby. Yeah. I'm a, um, this is gonna be proof of some old videos I made. I told y'all we took Detroit, man. This video about to prove it. Yeah, Lee. My nigga, talk and destroy. Yeah. Sleep with Lee in the ski. Man, the BMW clan ain't fucking around. Hold on. Hold on. Y'all heard what he just said? Now, this is 1990. This nigga just said, man, the DMW clan ain't fucking around. Where, who, who stole that? This is 1990. Wu-Tang, man, you know them niggas heard this shit? Them niggas heard, RZA used to listen to all type of music. He a nigga like me, had that ear like me. He was listening to all type of shit around. And niggas heard that good Detroit shit. Boy, that nigga, they got that from that. That Wu-Tang clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Come on, man. This nigga said that in 1990. Man, the DMW clan ain't fucking around. They just put their little spin on it. Ha, ha, ha. Set by me. You best to be. I got the coldest limp. Yeah. Go insane. You did. Two to the head. Thank you. The fang. Yeah. Doing it. It's putting suckers to sleep. Yeah, we put niggas to sleep. This is a classic. 1990. 
1996. Put 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 put, uh, put uh, niggas to sleep. That's what the real say. Just say, put the put the put the put the, put the niggas to sleep. Ha. The real song was about like man, ten minutes. We had the New York copycats. Pass me a starter cap. Bow loud so I can wow. No, you can't work me. Yeah, nigga can hurt me. Nigga. Do the servant, doing the Earl friendly, you cripple and hurting, yeah. Wearing top tens, devil heads. Yeah. Been rocking them devil heads, nigga. I want to dead. Back to DMW. Kiss the whip. And the man, yeah, yeah, go to the house that turns up her nose, yeah, I left the truck. Cases in a spot near you. Ooh. We put a niggas to sleep. Classic. I had to play the whole song, dog. A fair use. Man. Fair use for this. It's classic. These niggas from my hood and shit, I could bug, I, I could share this, I, I, I put them like to sleep. I'm a, um, I'm gonna come with the video, uh, I'm gonna pause it for a second, but yeah, this video about to be proof. I had, um, said that we had took Detroit, like, even though, don't get it confused, like, we was all melanated people, Negroes, we always was in. In Michigan, Canada, Detroit, you know, we all over America. We was the first people here, so we was all over here. But um a lot of a lot of our people um uh, was living down what what y'all call down south is really the north. Uh, you know what I mean? And at one point in time a lot of us was coming up here, they had built industries up here and, and we was just coming up here and and eventually we just end up you know, taking the whole city. You know what I mean? Like my people, my uncle Mitchell and them was up here in the fifties, stuff. But they they came from Georgia. You know, my um uh, my other uncles on my mama's side, Uncle Jeff, all them they was up here in the fifties and sixties, and they came from Alabama. You know what I mean? So I'm about to um uh, fire me up a old log. Got some old good little cookie, baby. I'm about to uh, go to this video real quick. And I never even seen this video until yesterday, man. And I've been seeing all this stuff for years, man. And, uh, let me pause it. I'll be right back, family. Yeah, family. I'm back. I watch this video. I'm going to talk y'all through it. called these among the most segregated suburbs in America. Suburbs created by white flight and black rage. <laughs> Listen to the racist shit. Suburbs created by white plight and black rage. The worst race riot in U.S. history. By the time it was over, 43 were dead and hundreds were hurt. They're going to show a brother hurt. No, we weren't the ones hurt. Blacks were angry. Whites were terrified. <laughs> yeah, they... Whites like Norm Bidner, who moved to the suburbs the year of the riot. I went to school with colored... I didn't want my white being around colored. Why? Who wants them next? You see, they call us colors. Everybody sees what they've done to Detroit. The copper colored America. White families have moved out of Detroit and left. Let me pause. You see, he called us colors. That's because that's what we were. We the copper colors. When you look into the um, first Webster's dictionary that ever was um, created, and you look up American, it say the copper color. It say copper first, then it say colored. It got it. Um, with a um I forgot what you call that, but a dash in the middle of a copper color races was the original Americans 
but now is the term is used for Europeans. And that was that's the eighteen some eighteen twenty eight I think dictionary, Webster's dictionary. So that when he said that that was natural for him to say that they talking about the Indians, that was us, and they about to talk about this. They say the suburbs. This is what they saying. The the pale the pale people had moved to the suburbs and we we ran them out the city and I said that on the video I it's on my Tulsa burner video and it's on my um Detroit is the real dirty south video I talked about this and they about to prove it left Detroit to the colors what if a black family moved left in it next to the colors <laughs> thing is is today suppose one family moves in then another then another what do you have prostitution <laughs> gang fights, gangs moving in. Who needs this? That's what many white suburbanites told us. Although, like Bittner, they deny they're racist. They see Detroit as alien, threatening. Dexter, no look at Dexter. Up. Blacks in Detroit exercise more power than blacks anywhere in the city. Look at my man Coleman. Realest mayor ever. In the city of Detroit, they kiss their behinds. That scares the white establishment. Oh, I think it does. They resent it. There ain't no respectful way for a black to act. In America. One love to call me young. My bad for pausing it. One love to call me young, man. It's just a real nigga, man, right here, man. The realest mayor ever, man. And, and had our city beautiful. What fuck what they about to talk about, man. He watched this. This my man coming. Yeah, like we destroyed the D. No, we just took it, baby. Success. Once, when the mayor was asked about enforcing gun control, he replied, "What's what he said? Damn, I'm gonna let them collect guns in the city of Detroit while we're surrounded <laughs> by hostile suburbs." To the mayor, it's quite simply <laughs> us versus them. <laughs> you hear me? You said they talk about gun control. They talk about taking the guns. That nigga said, "I'll be damned if I." If I take the guns from the niggas in Detroit and we surrounded by ho hostile suburbs. <laughs> uh, you like, nigga, if I take these niggas guns, way way the pill people come down here, way y'all niggas better shoot. This nigga this nigga was a real nigga, man. But there isn't complete harmony on that point. is one of Detroit's most outspoken ministers. He blames whites for deserting Detroit, but he says the mayor's hostility has kept them away. Whites have the money, blacks have the political power. The political power and the money have not been on the same track in the last 17 years. Mm. Heard what he said? You know, our city is falling apart. And we had the political ends, power. There are still signs of life. New buildings under construction downtown, new developments rising on the riverfront. The yeah. Fox Theater. Detroit yes, is beautiful. Even some good yeah, see, they gonna they gonna try and make Detroit look like I mean they do it every time, everywhere, every year. Like we just so messed up and and Detroit been always been a beautiful city. Even back when I was a kid, even now, even when they finna be talking about you know Detroit, even it's more um. It's more blight and, and tore down houses because a lot of people move. It ain't the same population, but, you know, Detroit ain't all messed up. Yeah. Detroit is falling apart. Yeah. 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 It's a Get it. Sight. Blacks and whites dancing together, dining together. Yeah. We're at a community dinner in North Rosedale Park. North Rosedale Park. Part Detroit that might surprise you. Where everybody looks out for each other and where yeah, that's where them drug the dealers used to move to. <laughs> well, they they acting like only pale people live in the suburbs, but that's where the drug dealers was moving to. It was more drug dealers in the city than regular people down there. <laughs> so a lot of people went to out to them suburbs, right? Where the pale people was going. Took them too. Shit. All this shit was already ours anyway, you know. Get back to the video. Is actually quite high. Brenda Can is a banker. Her husband Bruce, a computer analyst. They can afford to raise their children in the suburbs, but they chose to stay in the city. We are not going to. They're beautiful the people here. The drugs and the, the, the negatives. We're going to stay here and fight. Still, there it was more beautiful. This 1990 when they shot this. Life. It was more beautiful neighborhoods in the in the D then the than the raggedy the neighborhoods. Place. We 
went for a walk with Alphonse Davis, who showed us the block in central Detroit where he grew up. Central Detroit. This, this is the, when he said central Detroit, that's this neighborhood. Central High School is one mile up from my street, right on Linwood. Central High School sit right on Linwood. So the central Detroit, my you know, my neighborhood is is iconic in the city. You know what I mean? They gonna always come around here and, and you know that our our hood is the center of the city. So they gonna always come around here. Our our hood always been very popular. Twelfth, Linwood, Dexter. Twelfth and Calvert is the center of Detroit. You know, and shout out to my niggas over there. My man Dear and them niggas, real niggas. You know that that's the that's the center that's the center of Detroit. My man left. He shout out to my man left. Ha ha ha. One of the twelve street boys. But yep. So this nigga somewhere around here. When they say they in central Detroit, that's where they at. Where everybody can just come and just chill out. They don't have to worry about nothing. You know what I'm saying? What happened? Times, man. Everybody moved out. Everybody moved out. Alphonse was born the year of the riot. Raised without a father. Dropped out of high school. Used to deal drugs, says he's quit and needs a job. The job God, there's somebody on, y'all. Restaurant job, you know that's that's beneath me. What do you mean? What's wrong with working in a restaurant? Three dollars and eighty-five cents. What the hell is that? I ain't enough to spit on. <laughs> yeah, you hear Ark back then talk crazy, nigga. I ain't enough to spit on. Yeah, that way I was a Linwood nigga talking like that, baby. There ain't nothing to spit on. That's a big arc, baby. In the city of Detroit, that we've done to ourselves. Has there been a failure of black leadership? Well, Coleman Young's credibility has been hurt by a series of scandals. The latest involves charges that his police chief stole from a fund set up for undercover drug buys. <laughs> Man, I have been hounded for ten goddamn years. <laughs> Allegations. I remember when this shit was going on when I was a kid, dog. Come on, young, going off on that yes. But your police chief? I wouldn't give a f who it is. Yeah. It's an investigation. There've been no findings. A federal grand jury is also looking into allegations that Young, a longtime black activist, had a secret business that sold Krugerrands, the gold coins that symbolize South African apartheid. We tried to bring that up, but the mayor cut us short. Yeah, y'all in the pen. You need to do a chop job, obviously. No, I didn't. And that's what you've done. That's not true. Oh, but don't but you look at that through now. Let's, 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 let's. Why do you get so angry? Why do you get so defensive? I'm not defensive. I am angry. I'd be a goddamn fool to discuss with you on public uh, uh, television an allegation. Right. It could be the same as taking a goddamn stand. Right. And who the f you think you are? Bitch? Come here and cross examine me. <laughs> well, you sure the hell is it? It's a question, and a valid question. Uh, you're out of line. And as far as I'm concerned, the interview's concluded. Yeah, you're out of line. Get out of there. And he's mighty unhappy with this new book about Detroit. Then I tell y'all we had Devil's Night. That's going to be my next video about Devil's Night. Grim descriptions of the city. The author, Zev Heffitz, told us his is a cautionary tale. Detroit, in many ways, has always been an experimental city. Detroit was the first place to really industrialize. Was what the fuck on, man? What fuck what are you talking about? America was heading toward a sort of reverse apartheid. Poor black cities surrounded by rich white suburbs. This is the future they warned us about. And as for Detroit's future, well, some experts predict another 200,000 gone by the end of the decade. Like we still here, baby. The only people who haven't left Detroit... It's all fake numbers. They always come up with them fake. Which made us think back to Gloria G. She told us that since her son was murdered, she wanted to get out of town. But now I'll mm. find it a little difficult. Look at Auntie. I didn't leave it because my, my baby is buried here. And I want to stay around to keep flowers on his grave. Mm. Look at Auntie, man. I want to stay here and keep flowers on his grave. Look, you could tell she was just starting to smoke, man, back then. Dead, Stressed out, son dead, killed. Y'all never know where these people, who these people is, like y'all be rolling to. That's why I never, you know, when I was kind of in that life, I never did no people wrong, man. Put no hands on them or nothing, man. These people, 
was tricked into this and you know come from a long line of hurt man Yeah, man, Detroit did break a lot of people down. One fact that struck us during the preparation of this story is how much the population of Detroit... Yeah. Yeah, but, um... The proof of that, when they said the riots happened and and, and they ran... Um, the, 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 the pale people ran up out of here and went to them suburbs... And, and the niggas took the city over, and they trying to act like it was so crammed up and all that. But, you know, it was. It, it was crammed and stuff, but it was good times, too. Back in them 80s and 90s, 2000s, man. And even now, you know. I seen streets, I seen streets um, tore down. There was nice streets before. All these streets around here was nice in the 80s. In 90s and they did start getting torn down because a lot of people was dying and a lot of people was moving and, and and the ones who overtook the city still was moving to the suburbs too like i said a lot of the drug dealers was staying in the city they were staying in the suburbs and was doing their thing in the city well yeah we like i said we took it man we took it and they said the, the, the pale people were scared and all that it really was like that I told y'all, I said, if they did burn Tulsa, we got them back. We burned Detroit. All they did was they they, they burnt they, they burnt up all pill businesses around here. Like I said on my video, they burnt up all pill businesses, and it was a lot of pill people living here. You know, like um, I said, Casey Kasem, man, he from Linwood and all that. They was here in the 20s and 30s. This was their neighborhood, but Detroit was still melanated. Look up Black Bottom. Look up all that, all over the city, east side and all that was mostly all melanated people. They had different little suburbs inside the city, like Ham Traffic had different uh, races and cultures of people, but the city was already melanated. But we took that main area, all this stuff around here. This was like one of their most beautiful areas, Dexter, and toward, this is like one of the older areas too, neighborhoods. And we just took it, took it. 50s, 60s. My people was here in the 50s. <laughs> 60, you know, and they probably was here before that. I just, I read one of my uncle's obituaries and it said him him and his family moved here. My uncle Mitchell moved here in the, in the 50s. You know, so we've been here and we, um, <laughs> Come young, he funny. He like, why would I take these niggas guns? And they, they surround around the house. And what the, the pale people probably was mad, but they never came and did nothing. I remember a lot of pale people wouldn't even come to the city. And I knew something. Like I knew that this house right here we live in now, a pale lady had owned it, and my pops had bought it for her. That's the only pale people I knew that live here. And the other pale people I knew they was like, they was like us. You know, they live like melanated people. So you down there couldn't tell they was pale. Like my man, white boy. That's my man's, but you can't tell white boy ain't no nigga. He a nigga like me. That's my nigga. <laughs> you know, so we never had nothing against pale people because we never really was around them. But I know when they used to come down here, you know, to the to the city to get their drugs and stuff, I know niggas used to overcharge them. You, they, if you did see a pale person around too much, nigga don't think they the police. Somebody it will knock them out or rob them or shit like that. So you never really seen them. Like a, just a straight up pale person around like that, and that's why them niggas did that back in the sixties and seventies, and ran them off, and ran them out there to the suburbs. And them niggas came out to, the, to them suburbs, but right now the pale people they they trying to buy the city back, and they coming around. But I see that starting to the diminish now. That like it it ain't working how they thought it was around here because they you know a lot of them starting to leave too. That's coming back now, you know. But Detroit got a long history. We was already here. Detroit is like what they say as a, as a city when it was established, been like three hundred and fifteen years. But the, the a lot of the pale people, most of the pale people, ain't get here to the nineteen hundreds. I seen videos of them um, or pictures, photos, vi photos of them coming on ships and stuff. A lot coming here in the nineteen hundred, early nineteen hundreds. You know, and they and when they came, you know, a lot like I said, a lot of our people was down there in the um in the south, but it's really the north. If you you know, use your brain you will see it. 
is forward, not backwards. We in the back. But, uh, you know, and then the, the people, like I seen Pan-Africans and I seen some Aboriginals say stuff like, man, we can't be from up here in the car. I even seen Seti said, it's too cold. Man, we can't be back here. But he lived up here all the, you know, he lived back, uh, so-called up here, back here all his whole life, though. Man, some people think the first time we had uh, heated houses was, um, what was it called? General Electric or... Michigan Bell, whatever the gas company, man, we, what, gas companies were the first, we had uh, wood furnaces and wood stoves, man, that shit probably had your house way hotter than that, it was wood, wood furnaces and wood stoves, they were still using them in the 70s, at certain places, so, man, we was back here, and it ain't cold all year, it's only cold here in like two, three months, and out of the rest of the months, it'd be, it'd be hot, warm, and nice. So we been back here in, in Canada and all that shit. <laughs> We've been here, the melanated people, and we created. If you look at um, Black History Month, you see we created all that shit anyway, furnaces and all that. So we've been here. But this video is just proof.